a quote that you said, the longest lived people had high cholesterol. That mm. is everywhere. Can we like dig into that a bit? Yeah, yeah. So there are there are several studies that show this. One is a little more rigorously um, viewed, which is the the Sweden study. I think it's it's a, it has an abbreviation A Morris, um, but A M O R I S. But then there's also the Honolulu aging study, the Shanghai longitudinal study. There are multiple studies from various countries around the world finding that one of the most consistent predictors of the longest lived humans is high LDL levels. Now, I realize as I admit this, as I share that information, which is just real data published in peer reviewed reports, not even my own, it's that it's not to confuse correlation with causation, something that I mentioned in my lecture. But that is reflective of every human longe uh, longevity study. So people love to focus on longevity nowadays. And there's a lot of gurus and hacks and shills and grifters who claim that they know the keys to longevity. I don't like discussing human longevity much, although I don't mind stirring the pot to be a little controversial. But one of the reasons is because the entire field is based on speculation and conjecture and extrapolation. We simply don't, we cannot do studies in humans to determine what causes a human to live longer. It's impossible to do. So everything we do is claimed is based on animal studies or correlation, looking at survey data. And again, looking at the survey data, the people with the highest levels of cholesterol, even LDL, tend to be the longest lived humans. And there may be multiple reasons for this, including the role of cholesterol in particular in facilitating um, neuron health, the role of cholesterol in uh, facilitating the production of sex hormones. All sex hormones come from cholesterol. Um, one of the most critical mediators in the electron transport system of the mitochondria comes from cholesterol. Vitamin D comes from cholesterol. So cholesterol is a molecule of life. Even LDL, when people want to call it the bad cholesterol, LDL is an essential component of the natural immune system of the body. People only look at LDL as something that's transporting fats around the body. In an alternate universe, LDL wouldn't have ever been considered a fat carrier, and it would have only been considered an, an immune facilitator. LDL has this remarkable ability to bind pathogens from the blood and then take those pathogens to the liver to be dumped out into the gut to be excreted from the body. No one talks about that. But people with lower cholesterol levels are, I, I can't remember the multiples, but multiples more likely to experience severe infections and even die from septic shock or sepsis, this severe inflammation of the body. When you have higher LDL, your ability to scavenge the pathogens from the blood is significantly higher. So LDL and then cholesterol in general is, in my view, an absolute unsung hero of the body. Now, that's not to say all lipids are benign, but as much as a person may be getting a blood test and they may be concerned with their cholesterol, I would implore you, if you're going to be concerned with any marker of lipids, let it be the triglycerides not any marker of cholesterol per se. Cholesterol is a molecule of life.